Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. We've got another review for you today, hot on the heels of the first Blood Rain game, which we reviewed a couple of days ago. We now have Blood Rain 2 revamped. This was written for us by Asdin of Grinning Wolf Games, so thank you very much Asdin. Please do check out his channel, link is in the top pinned comment. Blood Rain 2 first released back in 2004, ramping up the graphics, game mechanics and combat from the original and mixing it with popular references of the era. It has turned into a fan favourite over the years. Rain was back with new acrobatic movements, rail sliding, fast paced blade and gun combat and fatal finishing moves, but having now played and reviewed all three releases of the Blood Rain series available on the Switch, is it third time the charm or does playing this one just suck the life out of you? Well thank you to the publishing team for the review copy and now let's find out. Hold that thought, this mess is just getting started. Rain is a damp fear, born from the unnatural union of vampire and human. Her mixed heritage grants her vampiric powers and superior resistance to sunlight and water, but curses her with the bloodthirst of a vampire. She has defeated countless monsters, both demonic and human, but now faces her most personal battle yet. Rain must hunt down her very own siblings, who are hellbent on creating a new era of vampire supremacy, in which humans are mere cattle. This time Rain comes across as a more fleshed out character, who has the attitude and the skills of the typical headstrong heroine archetype of the early 2000s. With more one-liners and tools in her arsenal, Blood Rain 2 revamped feels a lot more wholesome as a story, simply because there is more focus on the narrative and its characters compared to the other two installments on the Switch. At its core the game is still a third person hack and slash adventure, and without leaning on too many comparisons, it does feel like a giant leap from its predecessor as soon as you start playing. You progress by clearing areas full of tough enemies, followed by sections that require you to navigate platforms and solve some pretty gruesome puzzles. Your environment is a safety inspector's worst nightmare. On one occasion, Rain is planning her escape from a bar full of goons. She spots the massive fan on the wall and decides to lob her foes into it, hoping to break it down and create an exit. This is one of the many inventive ways that she will progress through the game and wreak havoc doing so. A lot of the staple mechanics make a welcome return, although they feel like an overall upgrade this time round. The harpoon chain for example has become a multi-tool, used to throw enemies around and carry out the macabre puzzles as mentioned before. Furthermore, I am glad the developers took a few pointers from other games in the genre, making this feel more robust. Rain has a myriad of moves that require specific input commands, of which there are plenty. Trying them out and mixing techniques are what hack and slash games are all about, and if you have ever experienced something like Devil May Cry or Bayonetta, this is very similar. Her Carpathian Dragon Guns require blood as ammunition, and they can be replenished by draining your enemy of theirs, similar to how feeding works. If you run out of ammo, you will sacrifice some of your health in return, which is an interesting mechanic mainly because you have to decide whether to feed to stay alive or to refill your guns during hectic moments. And enemies appear from everywhere too, making crowd control on the fly even more thrilling. The game can be tough but not unfair, as expected in these sort of titles. There is some strategy to clearing the waves of enemies, and I am glad that the game did require more than button mashing your way through. It is important, for example, to kick enemies that carry melee weapons, as they will push you off as soon as you leap to bite. Rain's vampiric powers make a return, although this time some will drain your rage meter, which is depicted as the blue bar under your health. This can be refilled by performing executions, and as stated earlier, adds to the ebb and flow of crowd controlling and surviving. You can activate your blood rage, making you more resilient and powerful, and in turn this will deplete your rage gauge in exchange for your health upon taking damage. This developed a tactic of depleting and refilling my powers at the cost of disposing everyone that stood in the way, and tactics such as this become a staple of the boss fights which you will encounter during your playtime. Talking of bosses and defeating these will earn you different power-ups, and it's nice to see that secrets, collectibles and unlockable costumes are added this time round, something that its predecessor lacked. When it comes to controls, Rain's animation and movements are pretty responsive, meaning that there is a weight to control in her as she jumps, evades and engages in bloody combat. That's not to say it's all perfect, the lock on mechanics and the overall camera controls can be frustrating to use. It was hard to lock onto an enemy and engage in battle as you are surrounded by thugs. Luckily the game allows for these to be slightly tweaked and I found that customising the camera's speed remedied this issue to some degree. Clicking the right stick down re-centers the camera behind you, but it does lack camera fluidity and zoom distance. 
This is a crucial component in a third person combat based game where you are constantly rushed by enemies armed to the teeth and it impacted how I would quickly damage control the upcoming battle. It would have been nice for the developers to have updated this aspect of the game prior to this revamped release. The story is reminiscent of action blockbusters with the gameplay to back it up. Combat can feel rough at times and can show its age, but environmental puzzles left to sadistic imagination and combos and executions that would give Bayonetta and Dante a run for their money mean that gameplay gets 15 out of 20. Controls allow said moves and combos to be performed effectively enough, although the camera can still feel quite awkward and archaic at times, and they score 14 out of 20. As far as the visuals and audio go, the developers went to great lengths to really bring Reigns well to life. Regardless of the age of the game and its presentation compared to current games, it has to be said that this was a massive leap from its predecessor. I don't want to go down the comparative route too often, but as someone that has played the first revamped instalment very recently, this sequel truly does feel like a step up on the presentation front. FMV footage is used for cutscenes, and the animations are decent, if not a little antiquated, as we'll touch on in a moment. They have been sharpened up with better textures and lighting effects overall, with the gore and carnage leaving behind pools of blood and damaged props. The physics do a decent job here too, with clothes and fabrics waving in real time, and they do add a touch of realism to each character model. There are some flaws though, such as minor animation frame hiccups here and there, which affected the enemy's hitboxes, and this was my main gripe with the game as combat is such a big part as you would expect. Some in-game cutscenes also suffered from animation not working properly, turning what is a decently implemented liveliness to characters lip sync into a dramatised puppet show. These didn't really hinder the overall experience to be fair, as personally I remember games of that era being just as rough around the edges, and for the most part it is a well crafted affair. The music kicks in with a mixture of industrial house to classic theatrical tunes. The more bombastic tunes really get the combat started and the whole experience reminded me of the beginning of the Blade movie where there is an action scene in a nightclub. I think the songs elevate the experience massively during fights and I caught myself bobbing my head ever so slightly as I fought my way through the rhythm of the music. It won't appeal to everyone but I'm sure there'll be one or two tunes that you'll purposely throw yourself into battle just to hear. Visuals set the scene very well, and thankfully the freezing problem that plagued its predecessor is nowhere to be seen. There were those frame animation hiccups that I mentioned that sometimes affected gameplay but more so the cutscenes, but on the whole visuals score 14 out of 20. Audio helps deliver the early 2000s action blockbuster feeling, plus Rain is just a fun character to listen to. It gets 17 out of 20. Blood Rain 2 Revamped costs £17.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. It will take most people somewhere between 8 to 12 hours to finish and it is a fun time from start to finish. This is definitely the better of the two revamped games currently available on the Nintendo Switch. There is more to do, more to unlock and overall it's more enjoyable, although I do feel that £12.99 or somewhere around that area would have been the perfect price for what is on offer. It's basically a good but old game with an added facelift and some quality of life improvements. On this front, value scores 14 out of 20. To conclude, Blood Rain 2 Revamped is a welcome addition to the ever-growing library of Nintendo's hybrid system, with it having enough about it to stand with other games in the genre even to this day. The risk-reward of the blood system works well, slicing hordes of enemies is fun, plus using them to work out how to progress at times is a surprising and interesting inclusion. It's not as polished as a Bayonetta game and it does show its age, but for anyone who wants a reasonable story and a fair few hours of absolute carnage, it's well worth picking up, albeit it's not the absolute recommendation it would have been had it been priced about £5 lower. You guys for decades. Where you been hiding yourselves? Oh, the old tongue still? Blood Rain 2 Revamped gets a switch up score of 74%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it. Please do remember to leave a like if you did. Another big thank you to Asdin for writing this one for us. He's done us a huge favour this week, very much appreciated. Please do check out his channel, have a watch of some of his content, maybe subscribe too, that would be fantastic. A big thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.
going slow. Hmm. <laughs> 